NASCAR teams have a big time team personnel burnout problem. According to Pete Pistone on SiriusXM NASCAR earlier this week, he said that he's heard from NASCAR Cup Series teams and Xfinity Series teams that they're having a hard time filling vacated positions and that there's people that are just completely leaving the industry altogether because they're burned out, they're bored, they're not being paid enough. The list kind of goes on and on, and it's not something unheard of. We've heard rumblings about this before. Every year, some people leave the industry, more people try to get into it. It works great if you already know somebody in the industry, of course, but right now, they're pretty desperate. Like we have teams that are just openly on Twitter asking for people to send their resumes in, send us a DM, send us literally anything. If you're competent, you have a pulse and you can somewhat handle a wrench or doing some sort of work within the race team, let us know because we may need you at some point. And you're probably thinking, oh, that'd be a pretty cool job to have working in sports. And it is, but there's a lot of drawbacks to it as well. And they're having a hard time filling all of those vacant positions. And of course, that's going to tee up the boomers to be like, nobody wants to work anymore. This generation's all lazy. Except it's not necessarily that. It comes down to work-life balance, which millennials and others have completely prioritized above other things. It comes down to pay and if you're enjoying your job or not. There's a ton of NASCAR fans as well that are going to hear this and be like, I'd trade my job in an instant to do what they do. And on paper, it seems like it'd be fun, sure. It seems like a good time, but at the end of the day, it'd be like just going to Disneyland. Oh, it seems great on paper, and then you get there, and you're like, this sucks. I want to go home immediately. It's just costing me money at this point, and I'm just unhappy. And that's kind of what's going on here. So you also had Pete put out his tweet, and then Bozy Tadarovich, who, and I'm sorry if I butchered that last name there, uh, but Bozy's a great follow on Twitter. Go give him a follow. He put out a thread, and it was really informative, and a lot of people replied to it with people within the industry as well. And basically, he's an IMSA mechanic. He's also helped out on the NASCAR side with Legacy Motor Club this past season with the Jimmy Johnson effort as well, and he kind of gave perspective, and a lot of it comes down to the rate of pay. So a lot of these guys are salary, right? And that's based on a 40-hour work week. And if any time you've ever talked to an employer and you're like, oh, salary, and they're like, yeah, but it also has a couple of hours of overtime built into it. Like they're doing you some sort of favor if you don't actually end up working 45 hours a week. For the most part, if you have a salary position, you might be slightly underpaid or kind of at the average for your position. And it's fine, right? And you can negotiate it however you want. But when you work in NASCAR, say you end up working 60 hours a week. Well, that 40 hours a week, what your salary is based on, just became exponentially less. And some people that replied to Bozy's tweets were like, yeah, you know, when I sat down and finally looked at the numbers based on how many hours I'm working and what my rate of pay is, you know, it's coming out to be like $15 an hour. And that's just not worth it. Not when the price of a home in Mooresville is $450,000. You can't afford that on a sixty to $70,000 a year salary for a mechanic. And don't get me wrong. That is good money, right? There's a ton of people out there that are like, I'd love to be making sixty dollars to $75,000 a year. And I'm not here to discredit what the pay rate is or anything like that. But at the same time, when you have a guy that can just go be a, a mechanic at a dealership or a rental car place or anything like that and make the same money, if not more, have better benefits, work less hours, and have a better work-life balance and be home on the weekends, it's hard to try to hold on to people like that. And this isn't just a NASCAR problem, of course. This is also happening in Formula One, it's happening in IndyCar, and it's happening in professional sports across the country, essentially. For years, decades, forever, basically, professional sports teams, race teams included, have been able to underpay their talent in terms of employees because they had this draw of working in professional sports. It's very cool. It's much cooler to go work on a race team. It's much cooler to go work at a ballpark. Oh, I work for the Boston Red Sox. I work for the St. Louis Cardinals. Sounds a lot more fun than being like, I work for Humana or I work at Huntington Bank. Like, it's just not as cool. It's the same reason like why tech companies are able to draw in people. Working at Apple is cool. Working at Google is cool. Working for a startup, generally cool. I've done it a couple times. It's It can be fun. It can also be an absolute nightmare. But you're able to draw people in based off of that. And sports teams absolutely know that. And it doesn't just apply to mechanics or, or other people. People within that thread responded and they were like, yeah, you know, my first year working in marketing within the sport, I was making $27,000 a year. That's not, that's unattainable. You cannot live on $27,000 a year, at least not within reason, of course. 
And now you have other people responding, being like, yeah, you know, the average now for a marketing professional in the sport is, you know, $50,000, $50 to $60,000 or so. Again, that's just not good, especially when you can go to a job outside of sports and make exponentially more. And that was something else that was mentioned from people in this thread. The fact that NASCAR has gotten rid of basically all of the fun around working on a cup car. You can't work on bodies anymore. You don't even paint cars anymore. You're not fabricating anything. You're not building parts, developing anything like that. And a lot of people just don't see the challenge in that anymore. If you ever talk to a fabricator, they want to make things. They're hands-on. They want to build things, design things, make it up as they go. And when you're just basically becoming an assembler and just putting bolts into holes, tightening them down and making sure the panels are all kind of square, that's not fun for a lot of people. And that's why they're leaving. You'll see them leave and they'll go work in either another racing industry somewhere else within the automotive world or just go do something else completely entirely. And that's fine because I completely understand that if you're not having fun, why be there? Then, of course, you have the burnout situation. And Chris Gabehart, Danny Hamlin's crew chief, responded to this thread and was like, you know, it's not so much the travel anymore because post lockdown, teams are traveling a lot less in terms of like what they used to do. Uh, he said essentially what it comes down to is pay. And NASCAR teams just haven't kept up with the inflation rate, the cost of living. And for years, th the lockdown kind of just expedited the whole process of them ending up in the position that they're in now. They're always going to get here because they're just a lot slower to adapt to the changing job market. And the way they're recruiting just doesn't work anymore. People aren't that enticed by working for professional sports. If you love racing, you'll absolutely make it work, right? Especially if you're young and coming out of college or coming out of a trade school or anything like that, and you love racing, you don't necessarily like understand what making adult money is yet, and you're willing to go there and try it. And then you kind of get sucked into it, and leaving is really hard. From what I've heard, and I, you know have delved in other areas of professional sports outside of racing, you'll always hear people be like, I'm not coming back next year. I'm looking for a new job. And they immediately get sucked right back in. It's like army guys when they're like, no, I'm never re-enlisting. And then they just show right back up at, at uh, well, I don't even know because I've never been in the military. They show back up at the camp or fort or wherever the heck that they go into the barracks. I don't know. Not a military guy. But it's kind of just like that. You always hear them, I'm not coming back. Then they come back. Because the draw is just too good, right? It's too much fun. You like the people too much. You like what you do. Something like that. And you're willing to kind of give up some pay just because you enjoy what you're doing. We're seeing less of that now. And like I said, you now have teams out there actively recruiting on social media. Being like, please, anybody, send us your resume. Have you wrenched on a local short track car or something like that? And of course, teams like a Hendrick or a Gibbs don't have that much of a problem recruiting, right? You're always going to have it. They're going to pay the top salaries generally. They're gonna have the best benefits for the most part. But at the end of the day, you have a ton of other teams in NASCAR that struggle to find new talent. But the good news is some of the younger teams, the Track House 2311 and even Legacy Motor Club have done a good job so far from what I've seen and been able to read. And shout out to Legacy Motor Club's vice president of race operations. He hopped in and basically broke down on Twitter what their benefit package is for their employees, and it's really good. It's not bad by any means at all. 10 PTO days, 17 company holidays, 401k match, uh, benefits, all like the whole thing. It was a pretty good compensation package in terms of what you get benefits. I, he didn't lay out the salary range or anything like that, which is understandable. Why we guard salaries so close to the chest it makes no sense to me, but regardless, it's pretty good. And we've heard that track house pays pretty well as, and same with 2311 because they're younger owners and they kind of understand that to recruit talent, you need to make it enticing and you need to make it more enticing than just being like, oh, you can come work for a NASCAR team because that's just not working anymore. So there is a burnout problem and it's something that NASCAR needs to look at. I saw somebody respond on TikTok and they were like, teams should just pay them more. Well, teams are already operating at a loss. They can't just afford to pay more and operate at a further loss. So hopefully when this charter agreement gets finally agreed upon and teams can hopefully get more of that TV revenue, it'll make things a little bit easier for them to be able to pay their employees, you know, what they should be getting paid at this point. So I'm sure again, there's going to be a ton of people that are like, I take that job in a second. And I'm sure you would. It seems like a fun time for a year or two, but after a while it does get old. So maybe think before you say that. So let me know in the comments. Would you work in NASCAR? Do you work in NASCAR? And if so, are you burned out? Because I can completely understand why. 38 weeks of the year on the road is a ton of work. 
And then you have 12 weeks of an off season, which some people seem to think that like all these teams are just off for 12 weeks. How do you think cars get ready for Daytona, for Atlanta, for Vegas? Like they're all getting prepped during this off season right now. It just blows my mind. But let me know in the comments uh, if you think that this is a big problem or not. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.